You ever just want to get out of the statue game or stop watching Mr. X? You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. How can you stop watching when pieces like this hit this review table? And I gotta tell you, I was not excited about this piece. Boy, was I wrong. Thanks for tuning in. For you new people, my name is Mr. X and this is the Extreme Channel. Big portion of the channel is all about extreme collectibles and as you see, I have an extremely rare custom, means it's an unlicensed private commission, they only made 40 of these, Thanos on Throne. I have been a lifelong Thanos fan. With Silver Surfer being my favorite character, Thanos, obviously one of his arch enemies, I remember reading tons of comics about growing up. <laughs> so big, it's kind of pushing me off the screen here. Even before the whole MCU blast. And then when Sideshow Collectibles, a licensed company, came out with their Thanos on Throne maquette about three or four years ago, right before Thanos hit really big in the MCU, Everybody loved that piece. I think that was one of Sideshow's biggest edition sizes to date. They made, I can't remember, it was like 6,000 of those. And funny enough, not only is this my second Thanos on Throne collectible, I have a third one coming in. That's right, this one from Thanos Quest, I believe ships in the next month. So when we get all of those in, you know what that means. That's right, of course I'll review that new piece when it hits the table, but we'll do a comparison of all three and see if I need to sell one. However, as I said in the intro, this is a piece, honestly, I was excited when they first showed the concept. And then when I saw some work in progress pictures, I wasn't a fan, particularly of the paint. So I wasn't as excited anymore. But now that he's here, I'm kind of overwhelmed. It is an amazing piece. Kind of a spoiler if you don't want to watch anymore. But if you are leaving, make sure to drop a comment below. Anytime you drop a comment in one of my videos, you get entered into a monthly drawing. Also, we are very, very close to this giveaway right here. On our road to 20,000 subs, we are giving out this Mortal Kombat statue at 12,500 subs. All you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification and stay tuned for that giveaway. All right, so let's dive into the extreme review. And if you're new to the channel, I use a one through five scale. One or you is ugly, and X is extreme or five. And we use a number of different categories. Some are self-explanatory. But today, I'm gonna highlight what I mean by each of those categories just in case, starting with concept. Now with concept is, we wanna look at does it follow the storyline? Does it follow the character? Is it badass? Does it work well together? Now with this one, it's a little bit unique because it's kind of a take on Thanos. It's not the comic Thanos. It's not the MCU Thanos. It's kind of something in between and I love what they did here. Incredibly unique. Let's check it out. So as throne statues became really popular, I'd say probably in the last two to three years, they all embody one characteristic, not all, but quite a few do, is that the fallen enemies of whoever's sitting on that throne are on that, and this is no exception here. You have Cyclops and Doctor Doom and Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Adam Warlock, Silver Surfer, and what's interesting about this is not all of these are heroes. Some of these are actually, you know, you look at Doctor Doom, he defeated another person trying to vie for power. And as you move up, he's sitting there in a very typical throne-like aspect. He's smug, he's conquered his enemies, he's contemplating. He has a few different head switch outs we'll look at in design, which tell a little bit different of a story. He does have the Infinity Gauntlet. That's one of the big things about Thanos. He's extremely powerful without the Infinity Gauntlet, but with the Infinity Gauntlet, he's almost, unde almost undefeatable. And then as you move up, you see more of the throne. It's actually made out of stone, and there's a lot of references to death. Now the comic version of Thanos is fascinated with death, both figuratively and literally. That's one of the reasons he wants to wipe out half the universe. He actually courts Lady Death. I can't wait to get XM Studios Thanos and Lady Death, which is also arriving this year. But I love what they did with the throne in person. It is amazing. And we'll dive deeper into that with paint and sculpt. And it's funny, I think I forgot to mention they have a reference to my favorite character on there, Silver Surfer, his board on the side. Now it's kind of hard to judge this because like I said, the source material, I don't really know or if this was just their own creative art direction, but it does encompass Thanos. It encompasses his power. It can encompasses some of his main enemies. Obviously, the Avengers with Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Silver Surfer, another cosmic being of Adam Warlock. I love the fact they threw Doom's mask in there. I love what Thanos is doing. It really shows how sinister he is. He's leaning forward. He might be contemplating. He might be getting ready to snap again. Who knows? 
I love the concept. I think it's completely different than sideshows. They put in the enemies. They put in a completely different type of throne, a different type of Thanos almost, different costume. So I think the concept's a 5 out of 5 or an X. Really quick, regarding the scoring, I want to address one thing because it came up recently in my review of XM Studios' Hulk transformation. When we get to the end, I have an overall score or an X-Factor score. It is not a cumulative score. It is, does this impress me? When I walk in, is this an amazing statue? So the ranking on the other categories that we talk about now, while they somewhat do influence the end score, the end score is a completely different category. But let's jump into design next. And wow, was this amazing when it comes to shipping. I'll just give you a hint. I've never seen anything that big. Hey, that's what she said. Here you see the shipper box, and FedEx wrote on it 134 pounds. The box says that it's 122 pounds. That's right, this is the heaviest statue or heaviest box I've ever gotten in at least one box. And then a really, really awesome art box. Check out the top of it here. I love the fact it's different from the actual statue. And then on all four sides, they actually had the Infinity Gauntlet. Here is the first layer. So you just had a few things on there, some of the portraits, which we're going to look at in a second. Uh, Silver Surfer board. Adam Warlock staff. And then here is the second layer. So Thanos uh, on throne is just one piece. We'll talk about some of the other pieces on where they go in a second. And during the assembly, I couldn't lift him up to show you the bottom, so I just took a picture of it. Here is the actual bottom. Now, before I show you the portraits, a few things I want, I want to point out. So first, Adam Warlock's staff, it can go anywhere. Uh, there's no uh, pin or uh, key on the bottom. You can put it wherever you want. That's what she said. <laughs> Captain America's shield, you can put it wherever you want. However, there is a slight indentation. It's supposed to go right here. Otherwise, that would be showing. The same thing with this skull up here. Iron Man's helmet, as you saw, is permanently attached. Thor's hammer, you can put anywhere. Silver Surfer does have a pin on the bottom, so it has to go right there. Dr. Doom, again, there's a little crevice to put his mask in there, which it kind of would have been nice if you could put everything where you want it. But this looks really good too, and it's less decisions for me to make. Now, he does have three different portraits, and they all tell a little bit different story. And funny enough, the one I thought I would never display is my favorite. So let's look at that one first. Right here, he has what I would say an evil smirk. It's sinister. It's Thanos. Like, he just destroyed everybody, and he's so happy. To me, this looks truly evil. And you'll notice the red eyes. And the reason why I point that out is this next portrait right here, he has blue eyes. I like the fact that it's different. This portrait, however, I am not a fan of. For some reason, his chin is quite a bit bigger, and we'll talk about this in Paint and Sculpt. And I understand this goes well with the concept where he's kind of really pleased with himself, but I just did not dig this. Now, the one I thought I would display, he has red eyes again, and and it almost looks like he's kind of screaming, but to me, it looks like he's laughing, and not like an evil laugh, even though I think that's what they were trying to do on this. I just do not dig this, and we'll, we'll look at it close in Paint and Sculpt, but I rarely do switch outs anyway, and I really like the first portrait we looked at. The design, I think there's one big thing they missed out on. The arm right here, since it covers his face, I wish there was a switch out option. Maybe one where we could replace the whole arm and it would be setting on the armrest. Um, maybe even a snapping Thanos, even though I don't think I would do that because uh, Sideshows looks like it's almost snapping. And then the other custom I'm getting also does that. So I think that's a little bit of a miss. I like how tall this is right here. Let's get the dimensions. He is 26 and a half, 27 inches wide. 
The tallest part is 28 inches, which is a big problem. And I would say the depth is right about 18 inches, maybe uh, almost 20 with his foot sticking out right here. So I, I like the way it looks, but I think that the size of it uh, limits the displayability. And if you're questioning how much bigger is this than Thanos on Throne, well, that's kind of interesting. Look at the portraits. Now, granted, this is a custom portrait for Thanos on Throne because I didn't want to dig the original one out of the box. But Thanos on Throne actually looks bigger, which, as you guys know, it's a maquette. It's bigger than one-fourth scale. This is supposed to be one-fourth scale. But here they are right next to each other to kind of give you an idea. And keep in mind, the custom one is elevated because he's on the riser. Now, I did have two little paint scuffs. No big deal. One is right here on the base. And the other one, I don't know where it came from. There's actually red on his teeth of the laughing portrait. So I think the arm covering his face is a knock. I think the size, I think it is too big. That's what she said. Then a few minor scuffs. So we're going to give it a V. So very nice. And while we're talking about scoring on this review, people have asked me, why would you give a three out of five and say that's very nice? When you have a one or $2,000 statue, average should be nice. So I still consider three a good score. And if you don't like that, it's my scoring system. Too bad. All right, so let's dive into paint and sculpt on this guy, and this is where it gets really good. First, just looking at the throne and the stone specifically. It looks great. I think they did a great job with the sculpt on it. There's not much texture, but I'm okay with that. But where it really shines is like on the back and the top. The different colors of gray they, they used in here, it makes it not too dark, but not too light. I really like what they did. And then you have a lot of those skulls that we talked about that kind of show the tribute to uh, Thanos and his obsession with death on the armrests, the top of the chair, and then a huge one on the back. And this one reminds me of Lady Death. And then look at the actual skulls. And these are a little bit smaller than his portrait, so you can assume these are definitely human skulls or some type of humanoid creature. Great coloring and shading on these. Here's Cyclops. I like that they added an X-Man. That's pretty cool. Especially the, the fact he's the leader of the X-Men. Here's Thor's hammer. Just a quick look. Not the best on this. Uh, it's not horrible, but it looks... It, I don't want to say it looks cheap. It just doesn't look as high-end as the rest of the statue. I like uh, Iron Man's helmet. I like the fact that the eyes are kind of lit out. Um, where it's busted and faded and crushed. Here's Cap shield. Uh, part of it's broken, which is great. And what's interesting about this is it's clean. And at first I thought it would be dirty if it was in a fight. Well, maybe this is a trophy of his now. Kind of reminds me of old man Logan at the end uh, when Red Skull collected all those trophies. Here's Doom's mask. Looks fine. Surfer's board. So it's painted silver, not chrome. And I like that. You guys have heard me talk about that before. To me, silver is like when it's powered down and chrome is where it's powered up. So obviously this would be powered down. And then here is Warlock's staff, looks great. A little bit different than you see in the comics. But let's get to Thanos. First, let's look at his gold trim. So like his boots right here, for example. I love the folds in these. This color on Thanos is what I was not digging in the photos. And this is why I love to see stuff in person. It looks so much better in person. I like the uh, texture on it. It's not like a pattern texture. And there's some good shading in it that doesn't make it too bright and gaudy. Looks great. And Thanos is huge. Huge feet. His hands are huge. A lot of the same stuff going on up here. You can see the infinity gems or stones. And then kind of a shoulder pad collar area. The same exact color. I like that contrast. It really makes it pop. And we're going to see this trim in other parts. But let's look at the blue outfit. So this looks great. He is over muscularized and I like that a lot. And then his pants, not only is this patterned, uh, you know, almost a honeycomb texture all over, but they're ripped up and the shading they did in it made it look dirty uh, where the muscle indentations were and some other places. It looks really good. I'm very impressed by it. Makes it pop. I think I actually like this Thanos, the paint and sculpt better than the sideshow one, which I didn't think I would. And then you see some of the gold trim we're talking about on his outfit. Very, very cool. So let's start with his portraits. And first I wanna look at, I don't even know what this is, his hat or cowl or whatever it is. It's the same on all of them pretty much, but there's some cool stitching in it. You see a lot of the stuff we saw with the gold and blues all over. It looks good though, nice texture. 
but we'll start with his, his blue one. So uh, what I think I don't like about this one is the fact that his chin is a little bit too big and you're gonna see that on the next one we look at. I really like the blue color they used in the eyes though. It's different than the rest of the statue and they did a great job, especially with the paint around his gums and his teeth, look really good. As far as the color for Thanos, a lot of people criticize how purple this was. I like it, I like it a lot actually. Um, it's, it is a Barney type color, but it suits the statue really well and I like it, how it contrasts the gold and blue. And then his laughing portrait, very similar. A lot of the same stuff going on. They did a great job on the teeth. You see a little bit of the tongue on the inside, it looks okay. Uh, and here you really see his chin jutting out. And I think that's what I really don't like about this, but his cheekbones are higher raised. Sometimes I look at this, he looks like he's laughing. Sometimes he looks like he's screaming. And then my favorite portrait, again, this sneer. This just looks positively evil to me. I love what they did in the sculpt in his face. Definitely gonna be the one I display at all times. So regarding the sculpt on this, I think I'm gonna rate the sculpt. I love the chair, I love every part of Thanos. Some of the uh, other portraits, it was more of the expression. So I still think it's a five out of five, especially with my favorite portrait. I just absolutely love what, the, what they did with the sculpt and the textures, very well done. Paint, I'm, I'm having a rough time giving it a five out of five, but I can't really find anything that I would do differently other than the blemishes I had. So I, I'm, I'm really digging the paint in person. This really, really pops, no regrets. Five out of five on the paint, definitely an X on the paint. And this particular custom group, I've actually got quite a few pieces from them. The Age of Apocalypse Magneto, the X-Men Chibi Diorama. Um, there's tons more than that. Uh, all the Phoenix Force pieces are from them. And I have quite a few more coming. So value. This guy was a tough pill to swallow. I think retail on the painted, I can't even remember. It was so long ago. This piece was long time coming. was like seventeen or $1,800. And then shipping was $500 for economy shipping. So you're over $2,200 all in. It is a huge statue though. Very low edition size of less than 40. I have no doubt I would make my money back selling this. I, I have no doubt this will be highly sought after. But I think overall value, it is a three out of five. It's very good. It's not a bad value, but it's not exceptional by any means, especially with so much Thanos on throne competition. A lot of people would look at, hey, I can pick up sideshows for $1,000 less, and it's also a very good piece. So does this have the X factor overall? When I walk in, does this get my attention? Yes, it does. I still love Sideshow, Thanos on Throne, Maquette, but this is an X statue. Overall, definitely give him a five out of five. Very excited to have in my collection. And part of it is the presence, the size. It's just so big. I'm not gonna tell you which one I actually do like better. We'll do that on the Extrumbo when we compare all three. But now is the time to drop in the comments, do you like this one better or Sideshow's better? Let's get a poll going, see which one would win if you had, if funds weren't an issue and you could buy just one, which one would you have? But we'll close it out for today, so make sure to hit that Mr. X logo. If you have not subscribed, 60% of you haven't. Check out some of these other custom statue reviews. Otherwise, I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.